kids. Uh, those of you who said they were on the Derek train uh, really should have been the night train. Coming in on the night train with an arm full of boxcars on the wings of a magpie across the hooligan night. Anyway, hello. It is Derek Knight. I am going to be hosting the virtual Geek Zoo Drink Pub Quiz for you. And it looks like we have a chat full of the usual suspects. Got the great Gabo and Don Rico Suave and Sovaz and, and uh, Metal Yoga Head and all these people. All these And Jerry Oki is in the chat. So if you'd like somebody to score your imaginary quiz tonight, I'm sure Jerry Oki will be, will be ready to do it. Hi, how have you all been? Yeah, I got my uh, Grunkle Stan Fez on. Uh, ah, the mic, uh, really nothing special about the mic. Well, it is very special. It's a very special mic. It's an Electro Voice 645 from 1949. Uh, I'll show you the front. Hold on. Uh, this is the sister mic to the 650. Uh, not as many 645s were made. This was a broadcast mic. Uh, that was uh, only made for a few years in the late 40s, early 50s. And it's got that more aircraft look in front. So really cool. Um, and uh, for a while, I had two of the three that uh, I'd only seen three in my life. And I owned two of them. Um, and then I sold uh, the other one because I'm like, why do I need more than one of these? Uh, so I've got this one. I've got this one, and I like it a lot. And, uh, yeah. I uh, rotate it in and out because it is still... It's as old as my mom, but it's uh, it works better. Uh, anyway, yes, hello. We're doing the, the big quiz. We're doing the big quiz tonight, the full seven-round quiz. And uh, most of the rounds were worth eight points, but three of them, that would be round two, the audio round. Round six, a double point round, and the final random knowledge round seven, they're going to be worth 16. Of course, I'll let you know about that because at any quiz that Geeks Who Drink does, you get a joker, and you can use that joker one time. It'll double your points. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that 16 is more than eight, and 32 is way better than 16. So when you use that joker, make sure it's on one of those three 16-point rounds, all right? All right. Um, yeah, I saw somebody talking about the uh, orange whip from last time. That orange whip, man, I'll tell you what. It is from a, an era, a dark time in cocktail history, and I have yet to figure out a recipe that in some way doesn't bug me, but I was thinking about it before. I'm not going to drink an orange whip tonight, but I was thinking about it before quiz, and I think, and this may sound blasphemous, but I think you got to sub in sun-kissed orange soda for the orange component. Right? Yeah. Gonna have to have some sweetened cream, some sun kissed orange soda, and some light rum. I think that's gonna do it. Um, gonna taste a lot more like a creamsicle and a lot less like a rotten orange. Anyway, I have been, I have been talking so much, so much uh, about things that aren't quiz. So you know what we should do? We should get on with the actual quiz, and we should get uh, started where we usually do. That is at round number one. Round one tonight is called Oops, All Berries. It's, uh, well, it's a round where every answer in the round will also be a type of berry, like crayon or boysen. But you'll figure it out because you're all very smart. And uh, here we are at question number one, round one, question one. Following the death of a friend, a sad Pablo Picasso spent three years painting monochromatic works of what color? Question one, once again, following the death of a friend, womp womp, a sad Pablo Picasso spent three years painting monochromatic works of what color? I see, uh, I see Metal Yoga Head asking a very, uh, very important question about the orange whip, frozen or not frozen. Uh, whipped. Um, but you could try it frozen. What the hell? Bust out the blender. It's a cocktail from the 70s. Shit, yeah, do it frozen. I don't, I'm not your real dad. I can't tell you what to do. Anyway, question number two. Number two, the opening line of an Oscar-winning Disney cartoon has the first little pig singing, I built my house out of what flimsy material? 
Question number two. Once again, the opening line of an Oscar-winning Disney cartoon has the first little pig singing, I built my house out of what flimsy material? We are in round number one. It's a round called Oops All Berries. Every answer will also be the type, uh, be a type of berry. And since we have just been talking about drinks, uh, tell me in the chat what you're drinking. Um, nothing nothing um, really too strong for me tonight. I'm just doing a, a diet root beer. Um, because I did a comedy show on Saturday up in Dubai at about 10,000 feet of elevation, and I drank a bottle of gin. And it's nights like that where I'm like, maybe I shouldn't drink as much as I do. Anyway, question number three. An art exhibit lets you become the T in the word Boston at what airport that's not named after Marvel's Wolverine? Question number three. Once again, an art exhibit lets you become the T in the word Boston at what airport that's not named after Marvel's Wolverine? Yes, Gabo, Divide, Colorado. Not the smallest town that I have ever done comedy in. That uh, that title would go to Alliance, Nebraska, where for some reason I was in an improv troupe and we were hired to do a high school after prom at 2.30 in the morning for about 40 very drunk high school students. Hey, it's showbiz. Eh. Uh, but yeah, Divide, Colorado. Um, it's small. And they don't have a lot going on, so they pack out this restaurant for comedy every month. And they really have a good time. So I had a good time. But we also had an open tab. What are you going to do? I'm going to walk in and you're like, you have an open tab tonight. Oh, good. Do you have gin? Um, yeah. Anyway, question number four. Round one, question four. A milk bottle cap maker was an early product sold in the Baltimore machine shop of Alonzo Decker and what partner? Question four, once again, a milk bottle cap maker was an early product sold at the Baltimore machine shop of Alonzo Decker and what partner? fair i live in colorado springs where we're already like 6500 feet but you go up into the mountains and you can get to 10,000 feet pretty damn quickly like that borderline where your electronics won't work right uh the air is nice and thin and breathable up there question number five round one question five heralding bad weather and kind of resembling lumps of cotton balls mamatis are a rare type of what question number five heralding bad weather and kind of resembling lumps of cotton balls mamatis are a rare type of what? Don Rico Suave with uh, another good question in chat. Am I going to go to Casa Bonita? Uh, no, probably not. I don't know. I mean, uh, growing up in Colorado, you go to Casa Bonita. It it was what it was. Um, I understand why people have this real nostalgia for it. I never thought it was that much fun. Uh, the food, I mean, the food was always terrible. So I'm glad to hear that they're trying to actually do good food. So that makes me intrigued. But understand that it's going to be like a long time before the lines die down. Like everybody wants to take a look at this place. Everybody wants to go. And I'm not much of a, of a crowd person, so I might give it a year or two before I think about it. Um, so yes and no. Yes, maybe. Not right now. That's how I feel about Casa Bonita. And plus the fact that it's up in Denver, and it's not in a great part of Denver. It's on uh, West Colfax, out near Lakeside. So no thank you.
Uh, question number six, round one, question six. The Book of Mormon starts with a peppy number by some pretty young missionaries who hold what church title? Question number six, once again, the Book of Mormon, speaking of Matt and Trey, starts with a peppy number by some pretty young missionaries who hold what church title? one oops all berries every answer will also be a type of berry and we are at question number seven number seven honk honk the funky way he craned his neck when getting signs from the catcher earned hall of fame pitcher rich gossage what avian nickname also from colorado springs he went to wasson high school question number seven once again honk honk the funky way he craned his neck when getting signs from the catcher Earned Hall of Fame pitcher Rich Gossage, what avian nickname? metal yoga head that 12,000 feet for uh, oh man that seems like seem that seems like uh the cap for human existence i don't know i mean i've taken people from sea level up to the p- top of pike's peak just to watch them gasp uh because that's about 14.4 but i certainly wouldn't recommend living at that altitude but i guess good for your partner that seems like uh, a real good way to build some uh, cardio um, that is America's mountain. Pike's Peak is America's mountain. And um, I hate to say it, but living here my entire life, I take it for granted. Like, sure, it's beautiful. It's like, oh, it's beautiful. But I see it every day. I see it every day. Um, it is nice, though, if I travel to some godforsaken place like Texas, I can always come back and be like, I like living here. Question number eight. Round one, question eight. The actual middle of summer is in August, but pagan astrology means that A Midsummer Night's Dream and the film Midsummer are set in what month? Question number eight. Once again, the actual middle of summer is in August, but pagan astrology means that A Midsummer Night's Dream and the film Midsummer or Midsummer, Midsummer, Midsummer are set in what month? Yeah, that's the thing about about living here, man. Everybody's like, how many 14ers have you done? Listen, man, um, <laughs> I did the incline. And if you don't know about the incline, look up the Manitou incline. It's a hell of a hike. Um, and uh, now that my hips are bad, I don't have to do those sorts of things. I don't have to go and hike up straight up the side of a mountain. Uh, it's stupid. I'll just take a tram. To the top if i can fit in the seats all right that is it for the questions proper for round number one the only thing we've got left to do in this round is the bonus question this of course is your opportunity to get five big dollars in credit to our geeks who drink shopatorium and or perhaps a uh whole swag box at the end of the night it's going to be a drawing for that uh so exclamation point and the answer in the chat is going to get you an entry into that drawing and here is the question predictably the captain crunch limited edition canuck crunch cereal had two different berries white and what other color your bonus once again predictably the captain crunch limited edition canuck crunch cereal had two different berries white And what other color? Exclamation point. And the answer in the chat is going to get you an entry into the drawing. So you get those answers in. I'll give you a little time to do that. And I'll come back and let you know the answers for this round in just a little bit. (laughs) 
Yep, yep. Yeah, I mean, it was, this is pretty easy. Y'all are getting it because y'all are so smart. I'm always impressed how smart y'all are. Anyways, uh, you know, let's take a look at the answers for round number one. Oops, all berries. Where every answer is also a type of berry. Question number one, following the death of a friend. Womp womp. A sad Pablo Picasso spent three years painting monochromatic works of blue. It was his blue period. At number one, blue. Number two. The opening line of an Oscar-winning Disney cartoon has the first little pig singing, I built my house of straw. Straw, Barry, at number two, straw. Number three. An art exhibit lets you become the T in the word Boston at the airport that's not named after Marvel's Wolverine. That, of course, is Logan. Logan Barry and Logan Airport in Boston at number three. Number four. A milk bottle cap maker was an early product sold in the Baltimore machine shop of Black & Decker. It was Mr. Black. So Black Barry at number four. Number five. It's not Rihanna Airport R2VQ, although that's a, that's a really good guess. You should always keep Rihanna in your back pocket for every quiz. Question number five. Heralding bad weather and kind of resembling lumps of cotton balls, mamatis are a rare type of cloud. I didn't know about the cloudberry because I'm not a, you know, I'm not a genius or anything, but I had to look up a cloudberry and now I'm aware the cloudberries look like little turds. So cloud at number five. Number six. The Book of Mormon starts with a peppy number by some pretty young missionaries who hold the church title Elder. Elderberry at number six. Number seven. Do 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 do. Hmm. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, honk honk. The funky way he's cra- he craned his neck when getting signs from the catcher. Earned Hall of Fame pitcher Rich Gossage the nickname Goose. It is Goose Gossage. Um, and uh, yeah, Goose Gossage is from here. He's from Colorado Springs. He went to Wasson High School, which has since been converted to some sort of adult education center. But you cannot swing a dead cat without hitting the dude. He is around. He likes being a celebrity. He's back living here. And he's just, you see him everywhere. So it's like Goose. And he just looks at you like, do I know you? But anyway, uh, Goose Gossage at number seven. And number eight, the actual middle of summer is in August, but pagan astrology means that a Midsummer Night's Dream and the film Midsummer are set in June. June berries are a thing. Uh, I'm not sure his liver has turned into pate yet, Metal Yoga Head, but who knows? <laughs> who knows? And Goose Gossage does sound a little bit like a, minth- a minced oath, right? Like, oh, Goose Gossage, I just banged my head. Uh, anyway, yeah, the, uh, the whole Streamlabs CloudBot thing, I don't know if it's working right now. So I'm going to see if I can get it to give me a winner. Hang tight. Because I saw y'all submitting, and it definitely accepted. There we go. All right, I just had to reload. So I'm going to close the entry, th- and I'm going to get a winner. I need a winner. Pick a winner. There we go. Everything changes with CloudBot all the time. You know? I am just going to sit here. I'm just going to sit here and complain about this thing that you can't see me doing. So it makes for really bad show. It's, it's bad showmanship. Your bonus question. Predictably, the Captain Crunch Limited Edition Canuck Crunch cereal had two different berries, white and red. Y'all knew that. Round two is the audio round for the evening. It is the first 16 point. Round of the evening. Ah, Gabo was asking a question. So the pasting, we talk in control, command, paste with I well, I'm Mac, so it's command. Um, but uh yeah, it really was less about the copying and pasting and more about where is the winner. So, you know, again, it's fine. I'll figure it out. You'll sit there and drink and quiz, and I'll figure it out. And at the end of the night, we'll all forget about it until next week. Anyway, round number two, first 16-point round of the evening. It is the audio round for the evening. And, hey, let's find out together what this round is. It's called If You're Going to Play the Game Boy, you got to play it right. Today would have been Kenny Rogers' birthday, and we're pretty sure we're remembering that lyric if it's right. So name the titles and the original artists of these 8-Bit Covers by 8-Bit Universe. Like I said, 16 big points are possible. Title and original artist on each. Here's number one. Good luck. Round. 
round number two. Here is song number two. Titles and original artists, round number two. Here's 8-bit cover number three. (laughs) Round number two, 16 points on the line. Here's song number four. good authority that quizzers love these so title and original artist here's number five eight bit covers in round two here's number six One point for title, one point for original artist. Here's number seven. Number two, here's 8-Bit Cover, number eight. Yeah, you're going to hear those 8-bit covers one more time. Remember, it's just title and original artist for a potential of 16 points in the round. Second time around is number one.
Yeah, oh man, yeah, I remember them lullaby parent well, oh the lullaby round was so bad. It was bad. We don't do that anymore. We wouldn't do that to you anymore. We have more respect. We got more respect. That quirky millennial parodies, last time we ran it, I did say, man, I really hated that. Um, but I don't have the final say, but man. Yeah, lullaby covers, heck no. So yeah, next week, all lullaby covers, the whole entire quiz of lullabies. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Zavolo, uh, I saw your comment in the chat. Metal or ska covers would be fun. Well, you'll be happy to know uh, that we do metal covers quite often. We have in the past, and we still every now and then we'll do a good round of metal covers. There's one guy in particular on YouTube out there. He's somewhere, I think, in Scandinavia or in Europe. And he does really, really kick-ass metal covers. Uh, we've used him for an entire round before, multiple times. And Ska, Ska covers, uh, our editor-in-chief, who's a pretty capable musician, has done custom Ska cover rounds in the past. We don't always have that kind of time on our hands, but it has happened. And who knows, if there's enough demand, maybe it'll come back. So just write in. Right in and say, we want more metal covers. We want more ska covers. In fact, bring back the novel Scarona tones. And uh, just if there's enough demand, who could say no? Anyway, it is now time for the answers for round two. Let's, uh, let's find out all about that together. Oh, no. It's over here, isn't it? It's answers. Let's push the answers one. Number one. That is Antihero, and that is by Taylor Swift. Yet another version of a Taylor Swift song. Number two. That is What's Love Got to Do With It by Tina Turner. Got to do with it. Number three. Industry Baby. That is Lil Nas X featuring Jack Harlow. Number four. September by Earth, Wind, and also Fire. Number five. That is Positions by Ariana Grande. Number six. Savage by Megan Thee Stallion featuring Beyonce. So far, no Rihanna. But yo, dog, we heard you like Rihanna, so we didn't put any Rihanna in the round. That's all apologies by Nirvana. And number eight. That, of course, is Fat Bottomed Girls by Queen. That was probably the easiest one in the entire round. So, yeah, not too shabby. I'm sure a lot of you got perfect rounds. But, hey, let's take a look at the next round in quiz. And that, of course, is round three. Round three tonight is called Absolutely Slaying It. Uh, this is a round on both garlic and steaks. Garlic and steaks. Two great tastes that taste great together in round three. Question number one. Which Mario villain gets powered up by eating bulbs of garlic? Is that Bowser or Wario? Question number one, once again, which Mario villain gets powered up by eating bulbs of garlic? Is that Bowser or Wario? Number three, question number two is number two. Ice Cube tries to do a stakeout while Kevin Hart and Ken Jong argue about Star Wars. Am I talking about 22 Jump Street or Ride Along 2? Question number two, Ice Cube tries to do a stakeout while Kevin Hart and Ken Jong argue about Star Wars. Am I talking about 22 Jump Street or Ride Along 2? Number three, absolutely slaying it. Roundabout garlic and steaks. Here's question number three. Number three, raw garlic is a key component of which sauce? Chimichurri or a veloute? Question number three, raw garlic is a key component of which sauce? Chimichurri or a veloute? Round 
number three question. Number four is number four. According to Forbes, is Elon Musk's stake in Tesla closer to 25% or closer to 90%? Question number four, once again. According to Forbes, is Elon Musk's stake in Tesla closer to 25% or closer to 90%? Number three, question number five. Number five, according to that song, the Christmas stealing Grinch has garlic where? On his brain or in his soul? Question number five, once again. According to the song, that Christmas stealing Grinch has garlic where? On his brain or in his soul? Number three, absolutely slaying it. Roundabout garlic, roundabout steaks, and we are at question number six. Number six, the Preakness Steaks horse race takes place in which city? Balmer or Miami? Question number six, the Preakness Steaks horse race takes place in which city? Balmer or Miami? three question number seven well you could either say baltimore or baltimore or balmer hun uh and if you're uh, from balmer you might hear balmer a lot i'm not so i don't have to follow their rules here's question number seven san francisco is home to a famous garlic themed restaurant called the stinking what Kiss or Rose? Question number seven. San Francisco's home to a famous garlic-themed restaurant called The Stinking What? Is that Stinking Kiss or Stinking Rose? I think my favorite thing about the chat in at any time is that it doesn't take much to get y'all rolling all it takes is one innocuous comment one innocuous pronunciation and there you go with jokes look at you you have jokes good for you good for you keep it up uh we are in round three and we are at question eight question number eight straight up which word means a type of steak used as a support stanchion or truncheon Question eight, once again, straight up, which words mean it, which word means a type of steak used as a support stanchion or truncheon? Number three, that's it for the questions proper. The next thing in order of business is, well, the bonus question. Somebody out there is going to get themselves five big dollars in credit to our store or maybe even get that big swag box at the end of the night. Once again, it is exclamation point and the answer in the chat to get yourself an entry. And here's the question. Don't overthink it. What beloved character owned a deadly stake named Mr. Pointy? Just do the first name of the character in the chat. Exclamation point, first name of the character in the chat. Don't overthink it. What beloved character owned a deadly stake named Mr. Pointy? I'm going to give you a little bit of time to get those answers in the chat. And uh, here in just a bit, we'll come back and we'll talk about the answers for the entire round. This is the third round.
fun fact. See, at the regular quiz, we can include alts because you know, like there was a there was somebody in the chat. It's like, actually, I think you'll find it was insert character here. Yeah, we could accept that at the regular quiz when we're using DOS, but when we're doing it this way, we have to put a stake in the ground. Yuck, yuck. And we can only take one answer at a time the way this is done. So just put the answer in. Okay. Okay. Anyway, we're going to talk about the answers for round number three. Uh, of course, it was around about garlic and steaks. And uh, here's number one. Which Mario villain gets powered up by eating bulbs of garlic? Bowser or Wario? It's a Wario. Bah. Um, he probably has a deeper voice. Anyway, Wario at number one. Number two. Uh, the Ice Ice Cube tries to do a stakeout while Kevin Hart and Ken Jong argue about Star Wars. Is that 22 Jump Street or Tree to Ride Along 2? It's Ride Along 2. Ride Along 2 at number 2. It's number 3. Raw garlic is a key component of which sauce? Is it chimichurri or velouté? And of course, it's chimichurri. It's more fun to say. Chimichurri at number 3. Number 4. According to Forbes, is Elon Musk's stake in Tesla closer to 25% or closer to 90%? It's closer to 25%. In fact, it's less than that. It's 23% if we're being exact. So 25% at number four. Number five. According to the song, that Christmas stealing Grinch has garlic where? On his brain or in his soul? Of course, that garlic is in his soul. Garlic in his very soul at number five. Number six. The Preakness Stakes horse race takes place in which city, Balmer or Miami? That, of course, is Balmer Hunt. So Baltimore at number six. Number seven, San Francisco is home to a famous garlic-themed restaurant called The Stinking What? Kiss or Rose? That is a rose. I don't know. The, the Grinch might drive a Kia. Shit, Kias have really good warranties, and they gotten way better as far as overall quality. I mean, look at the JD Power reports on Kia for the last 10 years. They're pretty good. So, yeah, I'll tell you, well, who else drives a Kia? Go to Phoenix, man. Everybody drives a Kia down in Phoenix. Why? Probably because it's cheap. Uh, yeah, it's the only thing I can tell you. Anyway, here's number eight. Eh. There we go. Number eight. Straight up, which words mean which word means a type of stake used as a support stanchion or truncheon? Well, a truncheon is something you get hit in the head with, and a stanchion is a big old support stake. Stanchion. At number eight. So, man, you know, I should probably pick a winner. You don't want me to I'll pick a winner? Pick a winner. Yeah. Cool. Well, I picked a winner. Now I get to see if this winner is legitimately a winner. Because, you know, sometimes. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's going to be good. All right, cool. More copying and pasting, because I know you love the play-by-play -play on that. And here we go. Let's talk about that bonus question. Oh, hey, it's the Jewish Viking. Man, I don't know what you drive, Jewish Viking, but and I don't drive a Kia, but if I were short on cash, I'd head to Phil Long Kia in Motor City. Get myself a Kia Sophia for only fifty nine ninety five. Of course, that was nineteen ninety eight prices. Anyway, don't overthink it. What beloved character owned a deadly stake named Mister Pointy? We had to settle on Buffy, so it's Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Round four tonight is called My Name is His Name Too. It's called that because it's World Senior Citizens Day. So this is a round on the dads of famous juniors, which, of course, make them seniors. And our dad jokes are on point. So you're going to do really well because you pay attention and you're smart. And here we go. Question number one. Number one. Harry Connick Sr. co-founded a major parade crew and regularly sang in the French Quarter during his 30-year run as the district attorney for what city? Question number one, once again, Harry Connick Sr. co-founded a major parade crew and regularly sang in the French Quarter during his 30-year run as the district attorney for what city? Four. My name is his name, too. Here's question number two. Uh, are we doing Outback jokes now? Come on, guys. 
Yeah. I told you, y'all. All it takes is one little thing, and y'all are going for it. I like it. Number two, outpacing Kenny Wallace and presumably Ricky Bobby. Dale Earnhardt Sr.'s last NASCAR win was at the Winston 500 on what was at the Winston 500 on what Alabama track? Question number two, once again. Outpacing Kenny Wallace and presumably Ricky Bobby, Dale Earnhardt Sr.'s last last, last, last NASCAR win was at the Winston 500 on what? Alabama track. Number four, my name is his name as well. Here's question number three. Number three, Cal Ripken Sr. once threw out eight straight runners despite a dislocated shoulder while playing what position in minor league baseball? Question number three, once again, Cal Ripken Sr. once threw out eight straight runners despite a dislocated shoulder while playing what position in minor league baseball? Jewish Viking, you know as well as I do that if Twitch wouldn't give us a copyright strike, the music would be so, so Nat's ass themed to quiz because I love doing that sort of thing. So, yeah, I probably would have. I can't. So, but if I were at a regular quiz, hmm, come see me at a regular quiz. Anyway, we are in round four. It's a round on the dads of famous juniors. And here is question number four. Number four, Strokes guitarist Albert Hammond Jr. got his music genes from his dad, who co-wrote One Moment in Time for What's So Emotional Legend. Question number four, once again, Strokes guitarist Albert Hammond Jr. got his music genes from his dad, who co-wrote One Moment in Time for What's So Emotional Legend. four is question five number five martin luther king senior spent over 40 years at the pulpit that now belongs to raphael warnock at what historic atlantic church question number five martin luther king senior spent over 40 years at the pulpit that now belongs to raphael warnock at what historic atlanta church Yeah, you know, we have done Kids Bop covers in the past for round two, but what we really need, and Metal Yoga Head, you just hit on this, we need to get those 1877 cars for kids' kids to do covers of songs that aren't 1877 cars for kids, but in the 18s, just, just straight up in that, just everything sounds like 1877 cars for kids. <sighs> round four. <laughs> Question five. Six. Let's do six. Six comes after five. So it goes. An Art Deco bank in Anderson, Indiana is one of the few surviving works by the architect dad of what Cat's Cradle author. Question number six once again. So it goes. An Art Deco bank in Anderson, Indiana is one of the few surviving works by the architect dad of what Cat's Cradle author. Great gobbo. I don't I can't remember what gas it is that makes your voice lower. Oh, sulfur hexafluoride. Look, just bam. You ask a question, somebody comes up. Sulfur hexafluoride, I guess. It's question number seven. 
Uh, Sammy Davis Sr. was a top vaudeville dancer in the 20s and 30s and a regular on the circuit named for what chain of theaters that put the O in RKO. Question number seven, once again, Sammy Davis Sr. was a top vaudeville dancer in the 20s and 30s and a regular on the circuit named for what chain of theaters that put the O in RKO. Yes, kids, do not try inhaling any gases other than air from outside into your lungs without uh, proper medical supervision. Uh, there is nothing worse than watching somebody inhale an entire balloon of helium and then passing out. Um, so don't do it. Also, yeah, don't don't inhale sulfur hexafluoride. That sounds bad. Weird. Just don't do it. Boo. <laughs> uh, there's a lot worse than that, R2VQ, but um, I don't know. I like to, yeah. <laughs> Can't stop me. All right, question number eight. You guys, y'all are y'all are something else. Uh, Freddie Prince Sr.'s tragic death was a plot point in what 1980 musical film set at Prince's alma mater, the High School of Performing Arts? Question number eight. Once again, Freddie Prince Sr.'s tragic death was a plot point in what 1980 musical film set at Prince's alma mater, the High School of Performing Arts? I said nothing worse because I'm trying to sound compassionate, but it's hilarious. You're right. I'm sorry. Lethal corpse, you got me. You, you, you got me. You found me out. Anyway, that's it for the questions proper in round four about uh, dads of famous juniors. And that means it's time to move on to this bonus question here where somebody's going to get something like $5 in credit to the store, maybe a big swag box. We don't know. But I am going to tell you, I know the last time we did a first name, this time it's going to be just a last name, okay? Anyways, let's do that. Let's start that thing up. Fire it up. Fire it up. Do this. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, cool. Yeah, here we go. Here's the question. Long before he joined the Avengers, what five-year-old actor uttered the immortal line, have any hair on your balls, in his dad's 1970 film, Pound, exclamation point, and the last name in the chat is going to get you an entry into the drawing. Once again, your bonus, long before he joined the Avengers, what five-year-old actor uttered the immortal line, have any hair on your balls, in his dad's 1970 film, Pound, I'm going to give you some time to get those answers in while you're doing that. I don't know. I'm just going to go make a lap around the basement. I'll come back, and then we'll talk about the answers for this round. Sure. So, Vaz, uh, make a lap around the basement. Is that an obscure euphemism for the reverse squirrel? Who knows? Who knows? Camera was off. You'll never know. Anyway, let's talk about the answers for this fourth round of quiz. About the dads of famous juniors, number one, Harry Connick Sr., co-founded a major parade crew and regularly sang in the French Quarter during his 30-year run as the district attorney for New Orleans, Louisiana. New Orleans, New Orleans, Louisiana at number one. Number two, outpacing Kenny Wallace and presumably Ricky Bobby, Dale Earnhardt Sr.'s last NASCAR win was at the Winston 500 at Talladega Super Speedway. Talladega at number two. Talladega. Number three, Cal Ripken Sr. once threw out eight straight runners despite a dislocated shoulder while playing what position in minor league baseball? Well, of course, runners are generally thrown out by catchers, so he's playing catcher. At number three. Number four, 
Strokes guitarist Albert Hammond Jr. got his music genes from his dad, who co-wrote One Moment in Time for Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston at number four. Number five. Martin Luther King Sr. spent over 40 years at the pulpit that now belongs to Raphael Warnock at Ebenezer Baptist Church. Ebenezer Baptist Church at number five. Number six. So it goes, an Art Deco bank in Anderson, Indiana is one of the few surviving works. So maybe it's not the best example of work, but it's one of the few surviving works by the architect dad of Kurt Vonnegut. Kurt Vonnegut at number six. Number seven, Sammy Davis Sr. was a top vaudeville dancer in the 20s and 30s at a regular on the circuit named for the Orpheum Theater chain. Orpheum puts the O in RKO. Number seven. I don't know. Y'all, I thought y'all just made up the reverse squirrel kids. So whatever it turns out to be, let me know. Um, anyways, number eight, Freddie Prince's senior, Freddie Prince Sr.'s tragic death was a plot point in the 1980 musical film set at his alma mater, the High School of Performing Arts. That, of course, is fame. I'm going to live forever, barring a tragic death. Fame. Anyway, that's it for number eight. Um, all right. Yeah, I, let's see if I got a winner. Do I have a winner for this thing? Anyway. Bonus question answer. I got to see if I've got that winner. Do I have that sweet, sweet winner? Hell yeah, I do. That's cool. Well, I'm going to do a little copying and pasting because, you know, it's part of my job. And y'all love to hear it. And here we go. With that bonus answer, long before he joined the Avengers, the five-year-old actor who uttered the immortal line, you have any hair on your balls? In the 1970 film Pound, that, of course, is Robert Downey Jr. I just asked for the last name, and y'all gave it to us. It was Downey. Round five is going to be the video round for the evening. And I might, you know, what the hell? Let's just get into it. It's called Bob the Bilderberg. We all know that secret societies run the world, but they can't help secretly bragging about it through hidden messages in media. So name these TV shows that show irrefutable evidence of the Illuminati's dark influence over the world. Good luck. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Competent crew. What do you think happened, Professor? <laughs> they were lost in the Bermuda Tetrahedron. Feeling listless again today. It began at dawn when I tried to make a smoothie out of beef bones, breaking my juicer. And then a Cheerios practice. Disaster. instrument for everyone so just keep trying until you find the right fit i love it and it's so light take hacker's first statement 
that triangles can have sides of any length. Is that true? One long side and two medium sides. Three medium sides, one short side, and two medium sides. Looks true to me, sports fans. There's got to be another way to look at this. my own decaying dimension, waiting for a new universe to call my own. Name's Bill, but you can call me your new lord and master for all of eternity. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Professor? <laughs> they were lost in the Bermuda Tetrahedron! <laughs> Smoothie out of beef bones, breaking my juicer. And then a Cheerios practice. Disaster. <sighs> Musical instrument for everyone. So just keep trying until you find the right fit. I love it. And it's so light. Two medium sides. Three medium sides. One short side and two medium sides. Looks true to me, sports fans. There's got to be another way to look at this. Name's Bill, but you can call me your new lord and master for all of eternity. Well, there you go. That is our round five, our video round for the evening. Um, I've never heard of number eight. I guess we'll find out what it is when we look at the answers. It's time to take a look at the answers for round five. So we get to find out what all that secret society BS was about. Miss you too, Don Rigo Suave. That is only murders in the building. I know that my big dumb head is covering up part of it, but, you know, it's only murders in the building. Here's number two. That, of course, is Moon Knight. Moon Knight at number two. Number three. This is an easy one. It's uh, Futurama. Everybody knows that. So a nice, easy point at number three. Number four. Another pretty easy point, I reckon. Um, it's Glee. I mean, I guess there's going to be a time when people don't know what that is, but I don't think that that is now. Number five, this is the Cuphead Show, which looks cool. I've never watched it, but now I think I'm going to have to check it out. Uh, number six, that is a show called Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide. Number seven. That is Cyber Chase. Gilbert Gottfried played a bird in that show. R.I.P. And number eight. Uh, definitely know uh, a lot about this one. It's Gravity Falls. Love Gravity Falls. So I'm glad that we in uh, we use a lot. We use Gravity Falls a lot. We do. Uh, part of that is because I love it. And then one of the other guys who does video rounds, Grant, he loves it. And uh, some, we actually kind of have to put a fatwa on the things that we like a lot. Um, but I'm the reason that you see Midnight Run once a business quarter. So if you don't know it by now, someday you're going to know it. Uh, round number six. That's where we're at now. Round six is called Same Shit, Different Decade. It is the second 16-point round of the evening. Because each question is going to have two correct answers. For one point, you simply answer the question. For that sweet, sweet second point, you answer as if today's date were August 21st, 2003. 
Mm, 20 years ago. So for one point, answer the question as if it were today, because it is. For a second point, answer as if it were 2003. Here's question number one. What former first lady has spent several weeks atop the New York Times bestseller list this year? Question number one. What former first lady has spent several weeks atop the New York Times bestseller list this year? Once again, one point for 2023, another point for 2003. I was an adult doing stuff. Hell, I was married. I'm not even that anymore. So, here's number two. What Adventures of Pluto Nash star plays a parent in Disney's new Haunted Mansion film? Question number two. What Adventures of Pluto Nash star plays a parent in Disney's new Haunted Mansion film? six once again this is a 16 point round because you're answering as if it were today and then answering as if it were 20 years ago we are at question number three now, number three in july what 29 year old japanese phenom played for the american league team in his third major league baseball all-star game question number three in july what 29 year old japanese phenom played for the american league team in his third major league baseball all-star game six is called same shit different decade once again it's a 16 point round because each question has two correct answers and you get one point per correct answer here's number four earlier this year what one named singer took a break from their hugely successful group to release a number one hit with crazy in the title question number four earlier this year what one named singer took a break from their hugely successful group to release a number one hit with crazy in the title Number six, question number five. Number five, Michael Imperioli is up for a Supporting Actor Emmy for what HBO drama that's pretty funny despite a high volume of murder. Question number five, once again, Michael Imperioli is up for a Supporting Actor Emmy for what HBO drama that's pretty funny despite a high volume of murders. Number six, once again, you're answering as if it were today, because it is, and then you're also answering as if it were 20 years ago, and we are at question number six. Number six this year, cancer took what beloved 70-something-year-old kids show host who had a lot of puppet friends. Question number six, once again, this year, cancer took what beloved 70-something-year-old kids show host who had a lot of puppet friends. say r2vq don't believe me when i say it's today that's what the illuminati wants you to think 
And I'm, you know, I say a lot of crazy things. So you can be whatever day you want it to be. I am not in charge of your calendar. Again, not your real dad. But we are in round six. We are at question number seven. And number seven is this. This year's field of presidential candidates includes what ultra long shot who became their state's first black senator exactly 10 years ago. Question seven, once again, this year, this year's field of presidential candidates includes what ultra long shot who became their state's first black senator exactly 10 years ago. six same shit different decade 16 big points on the line here's question eight number eight this year's sb for best nba player went to what straight laced six foot eleven center slash power forward and reigning finals mvp question number eight once again this year's sb for best nba player went to what straight laced six foot eleven center slash power forward and reigning finals mvp That is it for the questions proper in round number six. And it is time to move right along to the bonus question for this particular round. Once again, somebody's going to get $5 in credits or a big, big swag box at the end. And this is going to be two words smashed together. Earlier this year, SZA put out what single named for a 2003 Tarantino film scored by RZA. Exclamation point and the answer. It's two words. Smash them together. Once again, earlier this year, SZA put out what single named for a 2003 Tarantino film scored by RZA. You're getting those answers in. You're all really smart. You're really good at quiz. I'm going to give you a little time to do that. And I'll come back and tell you the answers for round six in just a little bit. Remember, no spaces in those bonus question answers that you put in the chat. So when I say smash them together, I I really mean smash them together. Smash all the words together into one big long word. And we are going to take a look at the answers for round six. Same shit, different decade. You had to answer as if it were today and you had to answer as if it were 20 years ago. Here's number one. What former first lady has spent several weeks atop the New York Times bestseller list this year? Obviously, Michelle Obama is the first answer, and obviously, Hillary Clinton is the second answer. Obama and Clinton at number one. Number two, The Adventures of Pluto and Ashtar, who plays a parent in Disney's new Haunted Mansion film. Well, the first one is Rosario Dawson, and the second one is Eddie Murphy. You got Rosario Dawson and Eddie Murphy at number two. Number three... In July, what 29-year-old Japanese phenom played for the American League team in his third Major League Baseball All-Star game, Shohei Otani is the current phenom, and Ichiro Suzuki, the 20 years ago phenom, Otani and Suzuki at number three. Number four, earlier this year, what one named singer took a break from their hugely successful group? To release a number one hit with Crazy in the title, Jameen from uh, BTS is the current one. And, of course, Beyonce is the 20 years ago one. So, Jameen and Beyonce at number four. Number five. Michael Imperioli is up for a supporting actor Emmy for what HBO drama that's pretty funny despite a high volume of murders. Uh, Right now, it's The White Lotus. So, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it. And the other one was The Sopranos. The White Lotus and The Sopranos at number five. Number six. This year, Cancer took what beloved 70-something-year-old kids show host who had a lot of puppet friends. Uh, Paul Rubens, a.k.a. Pee Wee Herman, R.I.P. And Fred Rogers, a.k.a. Mr. Rogers, R.I.P. 
Rubens and Rogers at number six. Number seven. This year's field of presidential candidates includes what ultra long shot who became their state's first black senator exactly 10 years ago. Tim Scott is the now and Carol Mosley Braun is the then. Scott and Mosley Braun at number seven. Number eight. Let's close the entries. Why not? Maybe, maybe even pick a winner. Why not? Just to see. Close them. I want to close them. Close them. Close them. Oh, well. Anyway, this year's SP for best NBA player went to what? Straight laced, six foot 11, center slash powered forward, and rating finals and finals MVP. The job is done. We can go home now. Nikola Jokic is the current one. And of course, Tim Duncan is the uh, 20 years ago one. So Nikola Jokic, the Joker, and Tim Duncan at number eight. Sorry you thought the round is hard, but it's okay. But yeah, we got. Well, I gotta find. I gotta find a winner. I gotta pick a winner. Got a winner. Now I gotta see if this winner is legit. Is you legit? Uh, yeah, it's fine. I think it's fine. It's good enough. Um. So there we go. I am copying. I am pasting. Oh, not hard. Brutal. Well, I'm sorry. I guess we can't make everyone happy all the time. And yeah, SB is the ESPN Awards. So good job. I realize that maybe I'm not talking to a room full of sports geeks as much as just geeks, which is fine. It's fine. We all have our niche. But bonus question answer for round six. Earlier this year, SZA put out what single name for a 2003 Tarantino film scored by RZA. That, of course, is Kill Bill. It is time for the final round. The final round is the random knowledge round. This is where anything can happen. 16 possible points if you saved your Joker. God damn, you're a genius. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? It is the final round. Like I said, it is a random knowledge round. It is also a 16-point round. That means that some of these questions are going to have multiple parts, be worth multiple points. So it behooves you to pay close attention, which I'm sure you will do. But I will also tell you how much each question is worth. And the best part about this format is it's on a screen. So there's so many different ways to figure out how much each question is worth. We're going to get started with question one, coincidentally worth one point. Question one, facing sagging recruitment numbers this year, the Army revived what slogan that carried them for most of the 80s and 90s. Question number one, facing sagging recruitment numbers this year, the Army revived what slogan that carried them for most of the 80s and the 90s. Name that slogan. Final round, random knowledge. Question number two is a two-point question. Because you can't trademark a real-world location, what Long Island town's name has appeared in the titles of dozens of haunted house films? And weirdly, Andrew Carnegie is buried near Washington Irving in what other spooky town's cemetery? Question number two, once again, it's a two-point question. First point. Because you can't trademark a real-world location, what Long Island town's name has appeared in the titles of dozens of haunted house films. Second point, weirdly, Andrew Carnegie is buried near Washington Irving in what other spooky town's cemetery? Final round, 16 big points on the line. Question number three is worth one big point. One big point at number three. The entire Strait of Magellan was somehow swiped by what fictional super criminal who fittingly anagrams to a red con in games. 
You have your anagram and scramble it. Find your answer. Question three. Once again, the entire Strait of Magellan was somehow swiped by what fictional super criminal who fittingly anagrams to a red con in games. knowledge 16 points on the line and we are at question number four worth three of those points tell me is it an official dungeons and dragons monster or a character voiced by danny devito it's either a monster or devito bugbear chief grundle king and dorgle once again number four three points it's either an official dungeons and dragons monster or a character voiced by danny devito bugbear chief grundle king dorgle Final round, random knowledge, 16 points on the line. We are at question number five. Number five is worth one point. On to the next book. The Brooklyn Public Library saw a big spike in new memberships recently after they rolled out limited edition library cards featuring album art from what billionaire native son? Question number five, once again, on to the next book. The Brooklyn Public Library saw a big spike in new memberships recently after they rolled out limited edition library cards featuring album art from what billionaire native son? Sometimes they are easy. That's how we sucker you in. Because you like, this whole quiz is easy. And then we do something like this. Here's question six. Three points for each science-y description of a novelty pet. You tell us the brand name. Actually, this one might be too easy, too. Who knows? We'll find out. Desiccated brine shrimp eggs. A terracotta figurine with salvia hispanica sim stems. And a chunk of Mexican beach stone. Literally, that's it. Question number six, once again. Three points for each science-y description of a novelty pet. You tell me the brand name. First one, desiccated brine shrimp eggs. Second one, a terracotta figurine with salvia hispanica stems. Third one, a chunk of Mexican beach stone. Literally, that's it. Of knowledge question number seven is uh, worth one point, but it might be the one point you need to win the game. You don't know, we will find out together. Even though they won't let you drink alcohol or kiss in public, what theocratic Shia nation does allow citizens to legally sell a kidney? Number seven, even though they won't let you drink alcohol or kiss in public, what theocratic Shia nation does allow citizens to legally sell a kidney? Question number eight. Number eight is a four-point question. After the latest exodus, sports. Only four schools remain in the Pac-12 conference, and they represent three different states with Pacific coastlines. 
Name those schools. Question eight, once again, four points. After the latest exodus, only four schools remain in the Pac-12 conference, and they represent three different states with Pacific coastlines. Name those schools. We did talk about this. It's sports. Sports ball never hurt nobody. Hmm. Well, we'll find out if it hurt y'all. But uh, anyway, that is it for the questions proper in the final round. That means it is time to fire up the final giveaway of the evening. Once again, for this bonus question giveaway, you got to put the exclamation point and the answer in the chat to get an entry. The question is as follows. The prototype for the Polly Pocket doll lived in a house that was jury-rigged from what common cosmetic item? Exclamation point and the answer in the chat. It's going to get you uh, a, a little entry into our thingy. That bonus question, once again, the prototype for the Polly Pocket doll lived in a house that was jury-rigged from what common cosmetic item? This is the final bonus giveaway of the evening. I am going to give you a little bit of time to get those answers in. I will come back in just a bit to tell you the actual answers for this final round. Remember to throw an exclamation point in front of that answer so that it gets picked up by Streamlabs. And hey, while you're fixing that up, we are going to take a look at those answers for this final round, the random knowledge round. Number one, facing sagging recruitment numbers. This year, the Army revived the slogan that carried them for most of the 80s and 90s. That is, be all you can be. Be all you can be at number one. For a while, what was this? What was it they were saying? We do more work before 6 a.m. than most of you do all day. And I'm like, I'm glad it's you and not me. Uh, question number two. <laughs> two points because you can't trademark a real world location, the Long Island town, whose name has appeared in the titles of dozens of haunted house films. That is Amityville. Amityville. And then we got, weirdly, Andrew Carnegie is buried near Washington Irving in Sleepy Hollow's cemetery. Amityville in Sleepy Hollow at number two. Number three. The entire Strait of Magellan was somehow swiped by the fictional super criminal who fittingly anagrams to a red con in games. That is Carmen Sandiego. Where in the world is Carmen Sandiego? Anyway, yeah, it's Carmen Sandiego at number three. Number four. Three points. Official Dungeons and Dragons monster or a character voiced by Danny DeVito. Bugbear Chief, that is a D&D monster. Grundle King, well, that sure sounds like DeVito. It's DeVito. And Dorgle is DeVito. So D&D, DeVito, and DeVito. At number four, number five. On to the next book. The Brooklyn Public Library saw a big spike in new memberships recently after they rolled out limited edition library cards featuring Jay-Z album art. Jay-Z is the billionaire, mil billionaire native son in question. At number five. A Midnight Lantern Tour at Sleepy Hollow Cemetery. That sounds like it would be fun. I did a, a cemetery tour in, um, where was I? Somewhere in central Pennsylvania. Um, Strasburg, Strasburg, Pennsylvania. It, it was not as cool like the ghost tour. I wanted more from the ghost tour. I don't know. I don't know. It was still kind of fun, though. Number six, three points for each science -y description of a novelty pet. You tell us the brand name. Desiccated Brian Shrimp Eggs. Those, of course, are sea monkeys. A terracotta figurine with salvia hispanica stems. That is a chia pet. And a chunk of Mexican beach stone is your basic pet rock. Sea monkeys, chia pet, and pet rock at number six. Number seven. Even though they won't let you drink alcohol or kiss in public, Iran will be like, yeah, sell all the kidneys you want. Hell, they don't even have to be yours. We got, you know, just set up a stand, sell kidneys. Pfft. 
who cares? Stew them, they're good eating. You know, you actually want to transplant them, maybe keep them on ice. Iran loves kidneys, loves selling kidneys. At number seven, let's do number eight. Number eight is a big four-point question. After the latest exodus, the four schools that remain in the Pac-12 conference are UC Berkeley, a.k.a. Cal, Oregon State, you got Stanford, and you got Washington State, the Cougs, UC Berkeley, Oregon State, Stanford, and Washington State. I'm going to pick a winner and do that copy and paste crap that you like so bad. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Everything's good. I think everything's good on this. We got ourselves a winner. I'm going to paste that sucker in there. And we're going to go over that bonus question answer right now. So the prototype for the Polly Pocket doll lived in a house that was jury-rigged from a compact, a makeup compact. Thanks everybody so much uh, for coming out, putting up with my copy and pasting and, and time-wasting and all of that other things that rhyme with Aston. Uh, but yes, if you're ever in Colorado Springs, come see me. I host on Thursday nights at the public house at the Alexander on North Nevada. Um, I also will be part of the Colorado Springs Comedy Festival the last week of September. So if you're in Colorado Springs or if you're near enough to Colorado Springs to get to Colorado Springs for that, come see me tell jokes. It's going to be a good time. <clears throat> also support the live quizzes in your area. You can find out the full schedule at geeksudrink.com. And whatever you're doing, have fun and stay safe because we would love to see you back again next week. Good night. (laughs) 